Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the workers' training tonight. We pray that you open our eyes of understanding to look into your word, understand your word, believe your word, and also have the powerful, productive effect of the word in every life in Jesus' name. Make the word profitable for everyone That we will go out and enrich other people's lives And through us, your word will prosper And your work will prosper everywhere we go in Jesus' name Thank you, Lord, for the understanding And for the answer you have given us in Jesus' name We pray Tonight we are looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16 and we are reading from verse 25 to verse 35. Acts chapter 16, reading from verse 25. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners had them. And then in verse 26 it says, And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaking and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed and the leper and the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew out a sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. In verse 29, then he called for a light, and he sprang in. And came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. In verse 30 it says, And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Verse 31, And he said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Verse 32, and they spake unto him the word of the Lord And to all that were in his house And he took them the same hour of the night And washed their stripes And was baptized he and all his straightway Then Bastate Paul says And when he had brought them into his house he set meat before them and rejoiced believing in God with all his house verse 35 now says and when it was day the magistrate said the sergeant saying let those men go let those men go as you look at these verses, we're coming back to verse 25. The verses reveal to us what happened before the jailer asked the question. It's very important any passage of scripture you're looking at. Look at what precedes and look at what follows. And as you take everything together, you're able to learn the lessons of life. One, for yourself, two, for your family, and three, for the people you are ministering to, and then four, for general understanding of the word of God. If you just take verse 29 to verse 31, and you look at those three verses, you will not know all the other things that actually had happened. And the reason why, verse 29 to verse 31, why those verses are there. 
Let's look at verse 25 now. In verse 25, it tells us what happened at midnight. Paul and Silas prayed. Why should they pray? Why were they praying? They had cast out the demon and evil spirit from the damsel. And the, uh, the proprietors of the trade that that lady was working for using divination they were offended and so they reported the case to the leaders and to the uh, to the powers that be and they took paul and silas and beat them and then they threw them uh, into jail into the prison it was at that midnight when they had backs were bleeding and when they were suffering and when they should have been asking the question lord why we've done the right thing you told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and then a great miracle had happened and now she was why should we suffer for that they did not ask any question like that they just sank unto the lord and they preached unto the lord and while they were praying and singing it was then the prison doors open and the foundations of the prison, those foundations were shaking and everyone's bands loosed. And then the Philippian jailer just woke up suddenly. All the doors were open and all the bands were loosed and he thought the prisoners had fled. And many people, that is where they get into problem. They think, they see something and they interpret that thing. And because of his thinking, he drew out his sword. He wanted to kill himself. Many people commit suicide because they think the end has come. Something had happened. Not by them, not of them, because of what other people have done. And because they think it is going to be a great problem on them, and they're going to lose their lives, they think, before I die in poverty, before I die in my suffering, before I die of the judgment, let me kill myself. They kill themselves and they die unnecessarily. It happens to so many people in the world. It happens to even people that have been going to church they see something they cannot understand they see something they cannot interpret and they think it's going to be a great shame on them a great punishment of them and before the government will do anything let me kill myself it's a wasted life because of their thinking well there are people that don't commit suicide but they do negative things dangerous things to themselves and they take decisions that will endanger their lives because of the way they think they see they do not perceive they think and then they take a negative action but then there was somebody there that was had been praying and then the miracle happened and it wasn't just praying he was also watching watch and pray he saw what the Philippian jailer wanted to do and he stopped the praying and now he spoke to the Philippian jailer there are people that are super spiritual. They pray and pray and pray all the time. And there are people in their communities that are hurting themselves, that endanger their lives, and they do not stop the prayer. They are praying, praying, and praying. And they never speak to the people that uh, they need to speak to. It is not only praying for the Philippian jailer. It's raising your voice and say, don't kill yourself. We're all here. And then the man took the light and he sprang in and he saw what had happened and then he now asked a question that's what leads us to the passage you have studied today what must i do to be saved and they said believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved that did not save him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus? What has he done? How can I believe on him? What is he to me? Because of that, they preached the word of the Lord unto him. Believe. That's the conclusion. That's the finality. But now they have to expose him to the word of repentance. 
repentance and to the word of faith in Christ and they prayed for and they preached to him he brought them to his house and gave them food he didn't count them as prisoners anymore even though they were still physically prisoners naturally prisoners but then he washed their wounds and they baptized him in water with all his house remember verse 21 verse 25 talks about at midnight verse 35 now in the day that's in the morning the following day the sergeant said, the, the majority said, said uh, tells uh, the sergeant, let those men go. That's the morning of their release. From midnight, they prayed in the midnight, in the morning, they were released. You know, in our lives, if you sing more, if you praise the Lord more, if you rejoice in the Lord more, if you look away from your suffering more, if you look up to the Lord more, if you don't think about what is happening around you more, and you're only thinking of the Lord and praising the Lord, your morning will be a morning of joy a morning of release and a morning when the enemy himself that had bound you the enemy himself that made you suffer will send message and say you don't need contact long leg anybody but the heaven has spoken to us let those men go let this man go let this woman go the Lord release you from unnecessary suffering in Jesus name tonight we are talking on the subject on the topic from the midnight of suffering to the morning of salvation from the midnight of suffering to the morning of salvation three things we're looking at number one the great miracle that provokes a great question Number two, the gospel message proclaimed to a grieving questioner. He was grieving, he was sorrowful, and he thought all the prisoners had gone. He thought, I've lost my job. The gospel message proclaimed to a grieving questioner. Number three, the gainful ministry that produced a gracious quickening. He has quickened you who are dead in trespasses and sins that he has saved you he has brought you alive he has forgiven you and now salvation has come let's come to number one number one is a great miracle that provokes a great question what well, eating from verse 25 again it says in acts chapter 16 verse 25 and at midnight paul and silas preached and sang Praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And then in verse 26, it says, And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaking, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loose. We're looking at verse 27, it says, And the keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep, and, be, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoner had been fled look at that verse again in verse 27 he wanted to kill himself a few minutes after that he was to get saved a few minutes after that his name was to re be written in heaven a few minutes after that the joy of salvation was to fill his heart but he would have killed himself there are people around us who maybe they poison themselves maybe they do whatever it is maybe they have lost hope and yet if we can get to them in good time they will be saved instead of perishing your neighbors will not perish around you and then in verse 28 it tells us in verse 28 and paul cried with a loud voice saying 
Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he tells us in verse 29, Then he called for a light, and he sprang in and came trembling, and he fell down before Paul and Silas. The miracles magnified Paul and Silas. When they came in, they were like just common prisoners. They were like criminals. They were like the dregs and the drawers of the earth. And this Philippian jailer was the man in authority. And he treated them like prisoners. But now the miracle elevated them. Miracles will elevate you. The power of God will elevate you. And the name of the Lord and the praise of God and the goodness of God that made that miracle to happen. And all of a sudden, the mind of uh, the Philippian jailer changed. Now he fell down before Paul and Silas. And look at verse 13 now. It says, he brought them out and said, Sirs, a word of honor, Sirs, it's a title of honor. It's no more like belittling them and looking down on them, common prisoners, religious fanatics who cast out devils from, you know, that uh, damsel. And now they came into my territory and I have authority over them. I want to say again, when the hand of the Lord is upon your life, when the favor of the Lord is upon your life, when the grace of God is upon your life, the people who are looking that show before as if you were a nobody they will know that heaven has made you somebody yeah. and the respect they didn't have for you before and they were gossiping behind about you is deeper is pastor is this is that when the hand of the lord and the grace of god fills your life exaltation in christ for you in jesus name they will not call you by the old name, prisoner, poor person, this and that. They now come before you, they bend down, they say, Sirs, they say, Madam, can you tell us about this? How the grace of God, the power of God is so uh, visible in your life. And you will answer them and your answer will bring them out of their dungeon in Jesus' name. What must I do to be saved? The great miracle that provoked a great question. Three things. Number one, praying without murmuring in the midnight of suffering. We all go through suffering one way or the other because the world is what it is and there's Satan in the world and there are problems in the world. There might be suffering, but we pray the praying with you without murmuring in the midnight of suffering. Number two, partakers of miracles through the might of sovereignty. The sovereign one, the great one, the mighty one, the one that never lost any battle, the one that sees you in your midnight, the one that knows about you when you are going through the valley of the shadow of death, the one that is with you all the time, you become a partaker of miracles through the might of sovereignty. Then at the point number three there, the prisoners without mind or motivation for salvation the prisoners they just kept mom they just kept quiet they saw the power they felt the foundation of prison shaking and even their bands were loose they saw the might of the lord and the miracle of the lord upon them and they said nothing they said nothing that's how some people perish they say nothing that's how some people perish they do nothing the favor of god the great miracle of redemption and the great miracle of deliverance comes to them they even taste of the powers of the world to come 
and they say nothing. They do not have the mind, they do not have the motivation for deliverance, for salvation. Like the Philippian jailer asked question, says, what must I do to be saved? These ones just kept quiet there until their chains were made again, until their feet were put into stock again, until the miracle of release and deliverance was reversed in their lives. They were just looking like this and they say nothing. Are there people that come to our church and you see all the great things happening? A neighbor is getting saved. Another one on the other side is getting saved. And people are getting delivered. And people are getting healed. They see it. And sometimes some of the miracles splashes on them. And they say nothing. And they pray at no time. And they do not ask for the salvation of the Lord. They pass by the miracles. And they are partakers of some of the miracles. And they say nothing outsiders the people who have never been to a church they're getting healed they're getting delivered and they're getting saved and they remain there they do not have the mind or the motivation for salvation they said nothing these prisoners were bound again and many of them died without another opportunity coming to them the great miracle that provokes a great question three things praying without murmuring partakers of miracles and prisoners without the mind or motivation for salvation let's look at number one there praying without murmuring in the midnight of suffering it tells us in uh, this uh, acts chapter 16 verse 25 and at midnight Paul and Silas prayed, were apostles, what should this happen? No, not at all. We've done good, and why should this happen? No, not at all. The people should have respected us, but look at the way they put us now. No, not at all. Praying without murmuring. You know, the devil would like to get at you. He knows if you can only murmur, he'll send you back to the wilderness between Egypt and Canaan. He knows if, and get, if he can get you complaining, why, why, why? He will make you to be among those people that murmured in the wilderness and then you lose your way and you lose your faith. But Paul and Silas prayed and the sun praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. It was midnight. They were praising their God so loud that they didn't say, well, this is midnight. Don't let us wake up anybody. You know, that's what the devil will do. He'll raise up people in the midnight and say, ha, ah, stop your prayer. You're disturbing us. Want to have rest. Want to sleep. You're not allowing us to sleep. And Paul and Silas did not mind what they will say. They prayed and the prisoners heard them. Look at Psalm 119 verse 62 in Psalm 119 verse 62 at midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments at midnight I will rise and give thanks unto thee and then we're told in Philippians chapter 2 verse 14 Philippians chapter 2 verse 14 says doing nothing do all things without murmurings and disputes without murmurings and disputing do all things help people don't murmur pray to the lord don't murmur praise the lord don't murmur love everyone around you don't murmur and wear a smile wear a smile and go through life with a smile with the joy of the lord in your heart no murmuring why is my people why are my people like this why are my friends like this why are my, the members like this why are the house fellowship members like this why is this happening and why is that happening there is no job and there is no sustenance why 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 don't mama don't complain do all things in the church do all things at home do all things in your office do all things where you have opportunity to serve opportunity to be of help to other people and of course in the day and in the midnight every time when you're all by yourself while Timothy is not there while Titus is, is not there while all those uh, you know underneath your subordinates are not 
there and you're all alone by yourself don't say i can complain now nobody will hear they will not know that i'm a murmurer i'm a complainer every time wherever you are let the joy of the lord be your strength and do all things without murmuring and by the grace of god you'll come out of that trouble i i will come out of every trouble the lord confirm it in your life in jesus name let's look at number two there number two there partakers of miracles through the might of sovereignty we're looking at acts chapter 16 verse 26 and suddenly there was a great earthquake suddenly when they were not expecting they were just praising god they were just praying to the lord they were not dictating to the lord let this happen let that happen let that happen suddenly god was surprised with a miracle you know if you're walking in the pathway of duty if you are rejoicing all the time if you're living your life without any care without any anxiety without any worry if you're going through life just looking unto the lord the author and the finisher of your faith and you don't mind what the devil is doing you don't mind what the worldly people are doing and you have made up your mind D during the day or during midnight i'll keep on praising the lord Lord, the Lord must surprise you with a miracle and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking earthquake is something that shakes the earth goes to the foundation of the earth it goes beyond your locality it goes beyond your territory when god wants to and when god favors you he can perform a miracle that will shake the earth because of your prison your prison is local your location is a little place and yet when god wants to because he smiles at you because he loves you because he wants to show the people that put you in the prison that you are untouchable who is the untouchable person there and they mistakenly touch the untouchable he can shake the whole earth just because of you if you know that you'll sing more if you know that you'll pray more if you know that you'll rejoice more if you know that you're untouchable and the people who touched you and the people who put you in prison they were stopping the work of god that man had been raised he says i will redeem you unto myself and these people that have created they are created for me and for my glory alone and it took them from that glory they took them from that assignment and god said you have gone too far you cannot do that now you stop my work a creature stopping the work of the creator that's why he said if i need to shake the whole earth to give them an earthquake to release paul i will do that and he did that paul is gone you are the man you are the woman now on stage he will do it for you i said he will do it for you and then it says and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed i'm asking a question your husband and the lord is performing a great miracle of earthquake for you why should your wife be bound all their bands were loosed why should your children be bound you pray you're a prayer warrior and you are a person praising the lord every time and you're singing the songs of the lord every time when god worked the miracle for paul and silas he didn't leave the bands and the yokes and the curses and all the restrictions on all the other prisoners he set everyone free all the people in your house free your wife your husband your children free 
while God is performing a miracle for you here, over there is touching them. Did you hear, did you see the testimonies? I saw them, what happened in the last crusade, that is in the February crusade, while we were praying in Taraba. In the hospital, one hospital in Ghana, they took, you know, the message there, and then in the playback, I heard, you know, my voice, you know, when I was preaching, and I heard as I prayed, and over there, one of the pastors there that took, you know, the laptop or whatever there, it was encouraging them, you know, the prayer has gone, it is for you, and over there, that man, he was uh, having a um, partial stroke or whatever, he stood up and then he started marching and then he walked I thought that there'll be headquarters clapping and then uh, over here in Lagos in Lagos here there was this uh, person who had that accident I think fracture in the leg and fracture in the arm and they put uh, they said they went to the bone setters and they set the bone there and they put a lot of bandage wound everything around and the fellow was there but there was somebody here who took uh, the message to that local hospital and over there as the prayer ended and was said in Jesus name that fine Final amen, that final amen is for you. And uh, with that final amen, the man got up and then he began to swing, uh, you know, that hand that had been, you know, down and all the bandages. And they had to be removing the bandages. Uh, if you have not uh, checked, you go and check up if it is happening here at the Alpha location, because tonight this is my Alpha location. And then it will, it will touch your mother It will touch your father It will touch all the other people Even the people that are not here The river of miracle will flow to them in Jesus name Now it says everyone's Amen that's the young man right there and they are showing you so that you'll know it's your turn who will be the next who will be the next i will be the next and it will happen to you in jesus name everyone's bands in your family loosed in jesus name uh, look at it happened suddenly why look at isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 it tells us the spirit of the lord god is upon me because the lord has anointed me to preach the good news unto the meek and he has sent me to bind the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives liberty to the captives is the opening of the prison to them that are bound you shouldn't be bound anymore the name of jesus sets you free in jesus name look at number three there number three prisoners without mind or motivation for salvation now the windows were open, the doors were open, their chains were broken, and they were loose. But they kept on sitting down there. They didn't have the mind of asking Paul and Silas, what shall we do to be saved? They didn't need to run away. If they ran away, they run into midnight darkness. But they could stand there and stay there and say, we heard you praying. We heard you praising the Lord. And as a result of just praying and praising the Lord, all this has happened. The two could have asked the question, but they did not ask the question. They remained there. Even the Philippian jailer thought, they should have taken action they should have fled but they didn't go away i pray you will not be like that 
while your doors are open opened like you have not been you have not been employed for a long time they say there's an open door there and you know there's an open door there for you to go and walk and just sit down there no mind no motivation to be employed or they say you know the will of god is now open you have not married for a long time but by the grace of God, I pronounce in your life, your door is now open. But you must come out, you must take action as a result of your door being open. And doors are opening now for you, my brother. Doors are opening now for you, my sister. You will take advantage of your open door. I will take advantage of my open door. You will not see it in the dungeon there. Don't you have a feeling of release on your legs? Don't you know you are set free? You are free. You will not remain bound in Jesus' name. But look at John chapter 12 verse 37. In John chapter 12 verse 37, it says, Though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. They didn't have the mind or the motivation for uh, the salvation of the Lord. It's like in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18. Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 18 there, talking about the people that miss their chance, they miss their opportunity, having the understanding darkened and being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. I pray the Lord will take all our blindness away in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two now point number two the gospel message proclaimed to a grieving questioner we're reading from verse 29 then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before paul and silas and in verse 30 he brought them out and said sirs watch must I do to be saved? Now, if you need help from people, use a language of respect. You are the hungry one. You need food from that person, sirs. Use a language of respect. You're looking for a favor. You have questions that have not been answered. And you want the question answered. You cannot just come in and say, what, what must I do? Preface what you are saying with some honor, with some respect. You see, some of us, we don't know how to approach people, how to melt the hearts of people, how to make them put their hands in their pocket, in their wallet, and bring out something for us. We must use respect and honor when we are talking to people, when we are addressing people. If we want the favor from them, sirs, what must I do? you to be saved i'm not asking for what you will do i know you've done something i know god has done something i know christ has done something now i want to know what i will do i'm, I'm not asking paul silas to pay the price for my salvation for my redemption i'm not asking any human being to pay the price for me i want to know is there any sin with the god of heaven who has opened this prison in doors with the God of heaven who has loosed everyone's bands and if they could if they wanted to be saved they could be saved I want to be saved what will I do I will pay the price tell me I will do what it takes once God has done his part there must be willingness on your part every time to do something a little thing to show that you actually want the salvation the deliverance of the Lord what must I do a must on me to be saved and then in verse 31 and they said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ I don't know what he was expecting maybe he expected a heavy answer a loaded answer a great answer something that is so big can I do that but a simple thing you know for you to have salvation 
And if you are saved, for you to have sanctification, if you are sanctified, for you to have the baptism in the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost, if you are sick, for you to have healing, if you are bound, for you to have deliverance, the answer is simple. And the thing you are to do is very simple. The Lord is not going to say, go and climb Mount uh, Kilimanjaro before you can be saved. Go and climb Mount Everest before you can be saved. And go and swim that ocean and that sea, something impossible for you. What he tells us to do after Christ has done what he has done is not very simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved and that same step that you take to be saved is the same step your household will take and they will be saved there are three things we're looking at number one what has God done for man to be saved that's the important thing that's the foundation of our salvation what has God done for man to be saved number two what must Christ do for sinners to be saved and once God's part is settled it's done it and Christ's part is settled it's done it the rest is simple what must everyone do to be saved let's always understand that what i do for salvation is not going to be in isolation from what god has done and what christ has done for you to be saved for you to be blessed for you to be favored for you to go to heaven what god has done number one what christ must do and has done number two and then a small part now what everyone must do let's look at what god has done we're looking at um, number one now what god has done for man to be saved in john chapter 3 verse 16 here is what god has done for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life god has done that already he so loved the world he gave he gave he gave his only begotten son look at verse 17 in verse 17 for god sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved god has done that already he sent his only begotten son and jesus now did what he ought to do look at romans chapter 5 reading from verse 10 in romans chapter 5 verse 10 for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to god by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life he's done it already he gave his only begotten son and then he tells us in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 and all things are of god who has reconciled us to himself by jesus christ and has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation it's done it already and now he said his suddenly begotten said look at number two there what jesus what must christ do for sinners to be saved what has he done we're looking at matthew chapter 16 verse 21 in matthew chapter 16 verse 21 from that time forth began jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must he must he must go unto jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day without that whatever anybody does cannot save him whatever any man any woman does will not save him or her whatever the philippian jailer did will not save him but what Christ must do, and he has done that, 
he was betrayed he was crucified he died on the cross and before he died he said it is finished now everybody can come in and believe on the lord jesus christ and be saved we're told in luke chapter 24 verse 44 luke chapter 24 verse 44 it says and he said unto them these are the words which i speak unto you while i was yet with you that all things must that's the word must be fulfilled which were written in the law of moses and in the prophets and in the psalms concerning me at the paschal lamb written concerning me at the one that was meeting by god and all our offenses and transgressions were laid on him me my god my god why hast thou forsaken me in psalm 22 all that reaching concerning me must be fulfilled and christ now has fulfilled everything we're told in acts chapter 17 reading from verse 3 acts chapter 17 reading from verse 3 opening and alleging that christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead that this jesus whom i preach unto you is christ he is the christ that's the one that brought salvation to us and he has finished that work of redemption and he has died already now what must i do to be saved you count on what god has done you rejoice because of what God has done. And then you count on what Jesus has done. He sacrificed. He paid the price. Now what must I do? We'll come to number three now. Number three is what must everyone do to be saved? Acts chapter 16 verse 30. He brought them out and said, Sirs, what? must i do to be saved and then in verse 31 they said they said how wonderful that paul and silas they said united together it will bring confusion to the sinner it will bring confusion to the questioner if paul says something and silas says another thing if paul says believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved and silas said no paul remember circumcision remember that he must do this he must do that there'll be contradiction if two of you go on the field evangelism field and you somebody says this the other one says another sinner the sinner does not know where to stand but they were united and unitedly they said believe on the lord jesus christ not moses believe on the lord jesus christ not on david believe not on the tradition of Israel Christ is the answer there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved it is the name of Jesus believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved isn't that assurance assurance that if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ there is no go and come there is no doubt about it you will you must be saved nothing can hinder your salvation as you put all your trust all your confidence all your faith in christ who took all your sins away and when any doubt comes in your heart about your salvation you say i'm looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of my faith i'm believing on the lord jesus christ i have assurance it is not my feeling it is not what i do it is not my good works it is not my ceremonial work it is the work that christ has done and because i believe that i am saved it is not by feeling it is by faith in acts chapter 4 verse 12 neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must 
whereby we must, whereby we must be saved. You know, sometimes our new converts will meet argumentators from the other religion, and those people can talk. They say, look at what they say, their book says, look at what their manual says, look at what their prophet says, and they bring confusion. But our combat should just rest in the fact there's no other name given among men in the past generation, in this generation, in any other generation, in any tradition, any religion, there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved in the name of Jesus. And because you believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus, that's why we're saved and nothing will shake you out of that salvation in Jesus' name. Look at Acts chapter 20, we're looking at verse 20, Acts chapter 20, we're reading from verse 20, how I kept nothing that was profitable unto you, but I've showed you and I've taught you publicly and from house to house, verse 21, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. I turn away from what has ruined my life. The sins were committed in the past. They were not to build us up. They were not to make us fulfill destiny. They were not to make us happy. They were not to to give us life eternal they were to ruin us i turned away from that thing that had ruined my past and i turned to the one that is going to build my present and my future you believe on the lord jesus christ after repenting turning away from your sin you are saved already you must be saved and as you continue putting your faith and calling your faith on christ you'll be saved forever in jesus name we're coming to point number three now point number three the gainful ministry that produced a gracious quickening look at acts chapter 16 reading from verse 32 acts chapter 16 verse 32 and they speak unto him the word of the Lord and they speak the word of the Lord unto him isn't it wonderful that two people can speak one after the other not hinder not compete with one another not contradict one another and the message can be understood very clearly even though there are two people speaking one has spoken the other now concludes that message and they speak unto him the word of the lord sometimes in the boss in the public when two people are speaking one has spoken like that while that one is speaking another one will butt in another one will you know just jump in and it's like they are competing it's like they're fighting and the people were preaching to they cannot get the message let that one finish and if you have any other thing to say then come in from where he's taught don't contradict him compliment what he has said and they speak unto him the word of the lord and to all that are in his house to all that are in his house it's not just telling them believe tell them the foundation of that faith in christ and the focus of that faith in christ and what follows that faith in christ and they were told in verse 30 in verse 33 it says and he took them the same hour of the night he has changed his mind they are not prisoners they are preachers he has changed his mind they are not sinners they are saints he has changed his mind they, they are not enemies they are friends he has changed his mind what was done to them was not right that change of mind is called conversion 
conversion. You can see the evidence. You can see his action. You can see the behavior. He, without them asking, he was not the one that beat them, that their barracks were bleeding. It's the officers of the land that did that to them and they put them in his custody. But now this is salvation and this is conversion. He took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. This is love. This is affection. This is fellowship. And he was baptized, he and Paul is straightway. And then in verse 34, he said, When he had brought them into his house, isn't that fellowship? Isn't that the evidence that this man had totally, thoroughly, completely changed his mind concerning them? And I brought them to his own house. He said, Meet before them. Now, the authorities that put them in jail did not expect that the Philippian jailer up there to guard them, to watch over them, and to make sure that they suffer very well in the prison. They didn't expect he'll take them to the house. He said, I am for them. I am no more for the authority that laid the stripes on them. That's the evidence of his salvation. And he said, Need before them. He said, meet before them. He said, I'm not going to allow them to keep on living on the prisoner's food. He said, meet before them and rejoiced. He rejoiced because his name was written in heaven, believing in God with all his house. All his house. All the members of the family, all his house, they were united. Nobody said, we are Gentiles, they are Jews. Nobody said they are not members of our family. Nobody said I can't eat with a prisoner. They all they were saved. They were born again. When people are born again, that's the change you see. That's the transformation you see. Gameful ministry that produced a gracious quickening. And let's look at three things here. Number one, the faithful declaration and exhortation to salvation. Number two, the firm decision and experience of salvation. Number three, the full dedication and evidence of salvation. Look at number one there. Number one, it says in verse 32, and they speak the word of the Lord to, and to him and to all that were in his house. They speak the word of the Lord. They preach the gospel unto them. They revealed the word of salvation. Acts chapter 13. We're reading from verse 26. In Acts 13, looking at verse 26, it says, Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you that feareth God to you, is the word of this salvation said. What word did they preach in the house of the jailer? To the jailer, to the wife, to the children, the word of salvation. The word of salvation. Look at number two there. Number two there is the firm decision and experience of salvation. The firm decision. I haven't heard the word. Okay, I was the one that asked the question, what must I do to be saved? And they have been faithful and they have declared to me the word of the Lord and the word of salvation and they said I must accept that I must embrace that and believe the word of the Lord now I must take action because the answer to my question had been given the firm decision and experience of salvation look at verse 33 there and it took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes he put action to his faith faith without action is dead i believe i believe where is your action where is your behavior behavior must prove your belief and your action must prove 
your faith show me your faith without works and i will show you my faith by my works he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and he was baptized they preached to him about believing on the lord go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved he said i'm ready now and he was baptized he and all his house straightway look at romans chapter 10 verse 9 in romans chapter 10 reading from verse 9 it says if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved then in verse 10 it says in verse 10 for all the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with his mouth confession is made unto salvation look at number three here number three here the full dedication and evidence of salvation let's look at that verse 33 again acts chapter 16 verse 33 he took them the same hour of the night he took them the same hour of the night i understand i think about it i'll ruminate over it i will see what you do no immediately immediately understood this is the day of salvation is the hour of salvation at that same time he believed he acted on that faith and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes he was baptized and all his straightway and then in verse 34 he tells us and when he had brought them into his house into his house he set meat before them and he rejoiced believing in god with all his house his life had changed new life has begun in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 it says if any man be in christ is a new creature old things are passed away and behold all things are become new look at the man old things passed away now he identified with the saints of god with the servants of god he ate with them he, he brought them to the same house where he was he exposed his wife and children to the same gospel message the joy of salvation filled his heart and filled the heart of the whole family obviously this did not happen last night this did not happen last week at this same hour when he had the word to be believed he believed and he was now in christ a new creature old things passed away and all things became new i pray in our lives all these that we have seen today will be reflected and demonstrated in jesus name and in our converse and the people will follow up all this will take place to you in jesus name and all the people were inviting this will also take place in jesus name and i pray that this evidence of salvation experience of salvation bubbling joy and happiness from the people who are touching their lives it will be evident in everyone in jesus name now let's rise up so that your own a flow of uh, the touch of the lord transformation of the lord will happen in your life will happen in my life this is not midnight there's no suffering here there's no imprisonment here but midnight paul and silas prayed and now when you are free no chain no shackles and no stocks on your feet and no padlock on your mouth you can open your mouth and you can pray much more than paul and silas prayed in the prison why don't you open your mouth and say lord i thank you for what i've learned and what i've heard and let everything be real 
reproduced and reflected in my life even tonight. Talk to the Lord. Talk, talk to the Lord in prayer. Let him do it. Let him hear you pray. No murmuring. No complaining. Opening your heart. Open your mind unto the Lord. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto the Lord. Sing at a time of trouble, time of trial, time of oppression, time of need, time of poverty, time of persecution. Don't murmur, don't grumble, don't complain. Sing when your trials are greatest. Sing unto the Lord and never give up. Then suddenly, the Lord will surprise you with a miracle. Chains broken. Stocks on your feet loosed. Yokes destroyed. Because you prayed at midnight. Because you called on the Lord. You celebrated the name of Jesus at midnight. Sing. Carry the cross with a smile. Whatever you've gone through. No water can swallow the sheep, the sheep where the master lies. Chain has to be broken. The prisoner has to be loosed. Oppression cannot go on. While you are singing to the Lord, while you are praising the Lord, that need ought to be solved. And the blessing of God on your life ought to affect all the people, all the other prisoners. You are not a team gathering together and murmuring. A team gathering together and complaining. A team gathering together and crying. Let somebody begin to sing. Let somebody begin to pray. Let somebody begin to praise the name of the Lord. And then your bands are loose. And the bands of all those prisoners will be loosed as well. Says, what must I do to be saved? Respect Paul and Silas. Says, respect your preachers. Says, respect your benefactors. Says, respect the person you expect a solution from to answer your question sirs honor them messengers of heaven honor them preachers of the word honor them carriers of miracles honor them sirs what must I do? Don't tell God to do what he commands you to do. Sirs, what must I do? Don't tell Christ to do what he has already done. He's not going to repeat Calvary. He's done that already. Now it's in your hand. What must I do? Don't tell Paul to do what you must do. Don't tell Silas to do what you must do. 
Paul and Silas will not repent for the sinner. What must I do? The servants of God, the stewards of the mysteries of God will not do that for the sinner. What must I do? Take time to find out what you are to do. Do it. And the Lord will bless the action of faith. Faith without action. Faith without works. Faith without corresponding response is dead. What must I do? Repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's ours to do and believe. The moment you do what you must do, salvation will come. Sanctification will come. Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost baptism will come. Healing will come. Deliverance will come. Suddenly, there will be a great earthquake. And the foundations of your prisons will shake. And everyone's bands will be loosed. The chain of Satan that binds anyone to a bad habit, the habit of the drunkard, the habit of taking hard drugs, the habit of anger, the habit of fighting friends and neighbors. When the chains are broken, all that habit will be destroyed. And then, if you have not been baptized in water, look at that Philippian jailer, the same hour of the night, he was baptized in water. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Salvation. Experience of salvation. Salvation, the evidence of salvation. His life turned around. He became a new creature in Christ. He now had love. He had compassion. He had affection. And he washed their wounds. His life changed. No enmity anymore. His life changed. No belittling of Paul and Silas as prisoners anymore. His life changed. Evidence of salvation. And he rejoiced because his name and the names of the household were written in heaven. As David prayed, give me, grant unto me the joy of thy salvation. That joy of salvation came to him. He wasn't thinking anymore. He'll perish forever. And the sorrow of eternal punishment, all that was taken away. He rejoiced believing with all his house. Have the joy of salvation there. The joy of regeneration. The joy of renewal of life. Re the joy of belonging to the Lord now. Because you believe. Joy. Joy. Christ lives on the inside. Because of that, there is joy. The joy of a new life. The joy of the miracle of transformation. Joy. And when the day was come, the magistrate sent sergeants and said, let those men go. Heaven has nothing against you. Let him go. Earth has nothing against you. 
Let him go. Let him go. Free. Free. Free indeed. Free in the mind. Free in your soul. Free in your spirit. Let him go. Satan cannot bind him anymore. The world cannot bind him anymore. Habits cannot bind them anymore. Oppressors cannot bind them anymore. Let those men go and be free as the one who has set you free. Be free as the one who has set you free. Let them go. Let them go. Believe it in your heart. Embrace it with your faith. Enjoy it in your experience. Total freedom. In Jesus' name we pray. If you are free, in Jesus' name we pray. If the Son, the Savior, the Sovereign One, if He has made you free, in Jesus' name we pray. I pray the freedom will be permanent. Your soul, freedom. Your spirit, freedom. In your body, freedom. In your community, freedom. In your family, freedom. And the miracle of freedom that gets to you. May each flow to every member of your family. As you go, the people you left at home and you come in like this, as you smile, the smile of freedom, they'll smile back the smile of freedom. What are you there? Father, in Jesus' name, we well, thank you for this story you have preserved for us. We well, thank you, Lord, because of your sovereignty, because of your might, because of your power, and because you can make your people sing and pray and praise in the midnight. Lord, I pray for everyone who has heard the word today. I pray they will sing and pray and shout and be joyful in the midnight in Jesus' name. Miracles of salvation, miracles of deliverance, miracles of healing, miracles of dominion, miracles of the open door will come to every life now in Jesus' name. The joy of the Lord go back home with you. The songs of praise go back home with you. And the release from every prison go back with you in Jesus' name. Your yokes all broken, curse all taken away, and the inhibition and incarceration of spiritual and the, the domestic problem all get away from your life in Jesus' name. And the miracle of freedom. Deliverance, dominion, joy comes on you. May it reach out to your wife. Reach out to your husband. Reach out to your children. And members of your family that are not saved yet, may the salvation of the Lord come unto them in Jesus' name. The joy of the Lord never stops in your life. The smiles of faith never stop in your life. And the victory that follows the people that trust in the Lord, may that victory follow you all the days of your life in Jesus' name. The Lord has reached you to be a conqueror. You remain a conqueror. 
and the joy that your name is written in the book of life in heaven may that joy continue continue lord let your hand be upon everyone let your goodness flow to everyone's life and let your power work wonders in everyone's lives do something to mark the today that they have been in your presence and you have rolled that problem away thank you lord because i know it is done we rejoice because we know it is done permanent miracle in every life in jesus name we pray and everybody shout amen.